Hi everyone, good morning. It's good to see you once again in our morning worship and prayer. And as we begin our day, it's uh, just fitting for us to, to worship God. Allow me to read Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6, as we sing our songs before God this morning. It says here, There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Let's do that today. Let's tell God that there's none like him. Let's tell him that his name is great and he is full of power. Let's pray. Lord, we honor you today. Thank you for giving us once again the opportunity to give you honor and to say your name is great. There's none like you and you are full of power. Remind us today of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
sa biyaya ng pag-ibig mong kay ganda Ako'y sa iyo Ako'y nilaban mo Ikaw Pag-ibig mo ay kay ganda and we experience that every day. Ramdam namin, nakikita namin sa family namin and even sa mga moments na mag-isa kami, sa mga moments na madami kaming pinagdadaanan. Thank you God, thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we are continuing our series, Awesome God. Actually, pangalawang araw to. We just finished our psalm, morning worship and prayer devotions. And sa mga nakaraang buwan, we talk about the book of Psalms, Psalm 150. But today, we'll be talking about the awesome God, that He is great and good. And before we, we sang that song, we read Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6. For now, I'll be reading verses 1 to 16 to give us a good context as we talk about the greatness and the awesomeness of God. It says here, Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity, A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nail so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your Jew. For among all the wise ones of the nations, in, in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. They are both stupid 
and foolish. The instruction of idols is but wood. Beaten silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Upaz. They are the work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the goldsmith. Their clothing is violet and purple. They are all the work of a skilled man. But the Lord is a true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At His wrath, the earth quakes and the nations cannot endure His indignation. Thus shall you say to them, the gods who did not make the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. It is He who made the earth by His power, who established the world by His wisdom, and by His understanding stretched out the heavens. When He utters His voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and He makes mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and He brings forth the wind from His storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment, they shall perish. Verse 16, Not like this is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Lord, bless your word as we study it this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Recently, uh, my wife and I wanted to buy a washing machine. And because our baby was with us, I told her to just stay in the car and I would be the one to choose which brand that would suit our need for now. And while I was in the store, I was trying to take photos, the, the washing machine, the brand, and the amount that I wanted. So I started, I started sending it to her through Viber. And with all those photos, I tried convincing her, this is the best brand with this good amount. And she, she, the reply that I was receiving from her was, we can still choose other brands. And after many discussions, after many days, we've decided to choose what she liked because of the brand and because of the price and because of the quality that she wanted. And I was trying to remember that. I was, as I was asking myself, Grabe, it took, it took us three days to decide which brand to choose because we wanted to choose the best option. Who among you here that every time you buy an item or product, you end up comparing first before you purchase? We do that most of the time. Why? Because we want the best option. If you look at the story of Jeremiah or the people uh, of Israel, they had the best option. They had the best thing in life, which is an awesome God who is great and good. But along the way, they faltered. They gave up. They turned away from this awesome God. And they ended up being committed to idolatry and injustice. That's the effect for them. But what, while, while, re, while we are reading Jeremiah chapter 10, we can see here that the people are turning away from God and they are giving themselves the customs and the culture of the nation around them, which they feel like this is the better option. But we can see that Jeremiah or the writer in this chapter is telling them, is instructing them not to run away from the God who is different from other idols. The idols that cannot give a better security, a better meaning, and a better significance. That's why the writer says, God is incomparable. We'll be focusing on verse 6 and verse 16 this morning. The first truth that we can see about this incomparable God that we have is this. He has an incomparable name. Verse 6, it says there, There is none like you. If you would observe the verses before verse 6, you can see there that there's a contrast between God and the idols. That God was contrasted with the class A, second-hand, man-made, created gods. It says there in verse 9, These idols are decorated 
and coated with silver and fine linen with purple color, and yet they cannot move, they cannot speak, they cannot talk, and they cannot do good. In verses 8 and 11, the idols that are choosing are stupid, foolish, and will perish. In verses 14 and 15, they are false, they are worthless, and work of delusion. When we talk about the idols that the house of Israel were pursuing, that they were creating, when we apply it today, when we look at it in our lens today, idols are something or someone else that take the place of God in our hearts. We feel like those things will give us significance, meaning, and security. Katulad ng binasa natin kanina, di ba? Decorated sila and coated sila with the best color and linen, and yet, they cannot deliver anything. It says here, we can see here that they are attractive and impressive, but they are deceptive and empty. For sure, we have seen that in our lives. There are many ways and options that are offered to us. Nasa unang tingin pa lang, feeling natin, wow, ang ganda! Wow, okay ito para sa akin. Ito yung inasam-asam ko. Ito yung gusto kong ipursue. But in the end, we've realized, empty pala. Naloko ako dun na. That's what the writer was telling. He was telling them, this God that you have forsaken, this God that you have turned away from, is incomparable. There's nothing like Him. It's totally different from the idols that you are pursuing. Maybe we ask today, ano yung idols natin? Maybe it's something that gives us power. It's something that makes us feel okay and better. It's something that gives us pleasure. Or maybe the possessions or the resources that when we have them, our life will be much better. Yes, those things are good. But let us not forget that those idols cannot replace the place of God in our hearts because God's name is incomparable. God is incomparably powerful over His creation. His name is powerful and His name is full of power. Kaya sabi doon sa verse 6, He's great in might. He is true and He is not false. He is living and not dead. He is eternal and not finite. In verse 10, sinabi yon. In verse 12, God is full of power, wisdom, and understanding. When you say power, it means He was the one who formed something out of nothing. Wisdom, it means that He is the one who put things in order. Therefore, God's name is incomparable and He is incredibly powerful. He is above and over creations. He holds the world and He sustains the nations. That's why we can be comforted today that this great God that we have is a powerful God. He can deliver us. He can sustain us. And He will be there for us. And this God who is incomparable and whose name is incomparable is also our incomparable portion. In verse 16, it says there, Not like this, he is the portion of Jacob. He formed all things. Israel is the tribe of his inheritance, and he is the Lord of hosts. I was trying to imagine this point that the writer was telling, that his name is incomparable, but he's also our incomparable portion. When everything else will try to offer us something else than God, we, they leave us empty. But when we have the best portion, who is God Himself, we can be fully satisfied. When you talk about a portion, it's a portion of land before. When a certain tribe, when a certain person gets a lot or an inheritance, it speaks of life. It speaks of abundance, and it speaks of prosperity. And we know that when God is our portion, He is incomparably good, 
He is the real thing. He is the best person we could ever have. He's most valuable and has the greatest value in our life. He's worthy. He is worthy. And he is, he has worth more than the things that we see in this world. God is our portion who can truly satisfy our deepest need, accepts us despite our sinfulness and brokenness, and loves us in our struggles. When you look at the people in Jerusalem, they were unfaithful and they were always failing God. But this God who has incomparable name and who is their incomparable portion was totally committed to them. They were running away, they're turning their backs from him, and yet they would God will choose to be fully committed to themselves. Why? Because God made a covenant relationship with them. Not only a covenant relationship, but a covenant promise that those who will trust him will never be dismayed or disappointed. And guess what? The same God that they serve is the same God that we are serving today. We can experience his incomparable name and he is our incomparable portion that could truly satisfy our deepest longing, who could heal us from our brokenness, and who can accept us despite of what we have done. And God has been totally committed. That, that's why He's great. That means He's powerful. He's also our portion. That means He disposes love, grace, justice, mercy in our lives because He made a covenantal relationship and covenantal promise at the cross and in the resurrection of Jesus. We serve a good and great God and He is awesome. Let's remember this morning that God is incomparably good and He is our portion forever. We have Him. We can enjoy Him. Yes, He's not like us, but Jesus became like one of us so that we can know Him today and forever. That's our security. That's our meaning. That's our significance. Let's pray. Lord, thank You for this morning. Thank You for just allowing Your Word to minister to us. We know it's real to the lives of the people before. We know that it's real today. We know it will be real tomorrow because you are a God who doesn't change. Sabihin namin ngayong umaga, Lord, wala kang katulad. Ikaw lamang ang kayang magbago ng buhay namin. Ikaw lang ang magbago ng sitwasyon namin. Ikaw lang ang kayang magbigay ng mga pangako na hindi nababali ang pangako na galing sa'yo. Thank you, Jesus, for just allowing us to experience all of those things. So, Dega, we say, you have a name that is great and that is mighty and full of power. Hindi ka lang great, pero good ka rin sa buhay namin. You know us. You love us. You forgive us. You sustain us. You minister to us because you are our portion. We have you and there's none like you. And we want you every day of our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship Him once more as we end this devotion. Ako'y nilaban mo
Thank you, Lord. Once again, uh, we want to experience your goodness and greatness every day of our lives. Lord, bless your people this morning. We want to see what you have to do. We want to encounter of who you are, and we want to see the things that you have in store for us. Bless your people this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <music> 